Greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well today. Today, I have an assortment of terrifying encounters to share with you. Before we get into the upload, though, a couple links. As you know, I rely on my Patreon, my PayPal, my merch store to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Those links are in the description below. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1, 2, and 3, the audiobook version. They were written by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeffrey Nadalny. They're available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, and the links to those audiobooks are in the description as well. Now, everyone, I have taken enough of your time. Let's get on with today's upload, shall we? Really quick, um, I am going to have a conversation with a person who I've had one conversation with. <clears throat> and uh, their kind of view, theories, and whatnot has blown me away. Uh, actually, through the last couple of weeks, I have just been swamped with uh, my dad and... Um, Yesterday, I had to bring my daughter to uh, the hospital. She got some issues with some lymph nodes in her neck. But um, I'm looking forward to talking to this guy because he kind of keeps it fresh for me. You know, um, the theories that we all share and... And, uh, I don't know, it's almost like everybody's theory is the same. And, and if yours isn't the same as this person's, then yours is wrong. This guy is just friggin' wow. And I shared his encounter, his five-part Sasquatch encounter, and, uh, a couple weeks ago. And he just... So I'm hoping that I can get him on the show and have him share some stuff with you guys because it's it's so enlightening I guess but the reason why he initially told me he didn't want to come on the show was because throughout the years of him doing this he has gotten shit on um, his theories don't agree with other people's even though they make complete sense. And, uh, you know, so I'm just, I'm honestly, he's a younger fellow like myself. Um, he's actually like 48 or something like that. But he's worked with Kunbo in the field. Um, and Kunbo's taken advice from him, which is, you know, amazing in my eyes because Kunbo is the real deal when it comes to researching and this guy so anyway i'm gonna talk to him and i'm gonna hopefully if he doesn't come on if he does come on that'll be amazing but if he doesn't i'm gonna hopefully ask if i can share his theories and perspectives on everything so all right enough blabbering let's get into some encounters Today's first part of the upload. My best friend has 52 acres of land. 90% of it is woods, aside from the opening where there's a barn in their house. This all started off as silly superstitions, but now it's real. She kept telling me there was definitely something in the woods surrounding her home. The property was vacant for three years. The owner's wife sold it to her under her husband's nose just to get rid of it. They haven't spoken to her since the sale, and they can't be reached. The cattle dogs, the chickens, the puppies in training, and even the horses have sent something that is not usual coyote behavior. We know when coyotes are close. I've been in the woods alone. It's part of my job working with her. The cattle dog will bark and hold his ground. One time I followed him, and he started whimpering and ran back to the house. 
Another time he was right next to the raptor, and something imitated him from a few feet away. We've seen something come out of the woods at night in the distance, mammal-like, on all fours. It stood its ground, and when the dogs went after it, it ran. I showed my friend a picture, and she said it definitely resembled a maned wolf, and it's impossible for where we live. I was on the property alone with the animals over the weekend while she was gone. I heard my babies babbling outside the front door. My babies weren't on the property. They were 20 miles away with my husband at my house. That night, the dogs were going insane, and so were the chicks. And the horses were usually docile, but they were jumpy and acting suspicious. Something killed a chicken last night. And the weird part is, is there was no blood anywhere. The organs and guts were gone. It was just feathers in the body. I don't know how else to describe it. No blood, nothing. Just an empty chicken corpse. It was so strange, I don't know what to do. We've heard screeches at the front door at night. This was also when I accidentally whistled at night to call in the animals for the evening. I don't whistle at night. I was tired and it slipped. How convenient. This and many more occurrences. It's my best guess to what this may be. Sometimes I'm out there alone with my two infants working the property and my friend primarily is there alone working because her husband works night shifts far away. We need some insight and some help. Today's second part of the upload is right in my backyard. I was camping in the Adirondacks, Lake George, New York. In the middle of the night I heard quiet heavy footsteps. I was mad because I was wondering who would walk so late at night in the middle of the woods. When I go camping, I don't want to see any other people if possible. The footsteps were soft and heavy, if that makes sense, and you could tell it had two legs. Luckily, I was tired to freak out or care. Then my foot got tapped by the tent wall. I whispered to my friend but knew that it was a waste of time. In my mind, I said, we're leaving in the morning, we mean no harm. I decided to let it go and not worry about it. I was too tired. It wasn't until morning that I started to think about the whole thing. What stood out was the footsteps and the steady pace like it knew where it was going. Also, the tap felt intelligent, like it was saying hi. But I wouldn't trust that, nor would I ever go looking for them in the woods. I know raccoons can tap and maybe deer, but... I know what I heard and felt. It was either a person in the middle of the night tapping on the tent, or a Sasquatch, Dogman, or something else. Today's third encounter. Riddle, Oregon, October 2008. While deer hunting in Boomer Hill area, Justin Camden, Cody Camden, and myself were traveling along the BLM road with the left-hand high bank and the brush-covered downhill side. I was driving, Cody was in the passenger rear, and Justin was out riding on the hood. My job was to drive and watch up the left side. Cody was watching down the hillside, and Justin was watching in front and scanning ahead. He had me stop when a large, cold, black Bigfoot had ran across the road about 40 yards or less. It grabbed the top of the bank, which was about 12 feet high, and hoisted slash leapt into the trees. I only caught a glimpse of black from my position in the truck. Cody also said he only seen a glimpse of black. Justin, however, saw the entire right to left crossing on two feet. He saw it reach up to the top of the bank and hoist slash leap into the brush and trees. He also explained he heard footfalls as he was running towards where it went up. We all heard brush breaking for about a minute after. Justin wanted to pursue it with his rifle, but after explaining exactly what he had seen, I asked him to leave it be. We were all scared as hell and his adrenaline was pumping. The thing was approximately nine feet tall, cold black hair, glossy, maybe wet. Very muscular in build, 100% not a bear. I only saw a flash and a hand mark at the top of the bank and heard the brush crashing. Justin came to me today and is positive it was a Bigfoot. I'm sure with his wildlife knowledge, he isn't mistaking another animal for this. It's in my opinion that the Bigfoot was getting away from another hunter 
and probably misjudged its crossing point, which allowed the sighting to occur. I found footprints in this area in the mud near a pond, and we intend on a full investigation in this area very soon. Thank you. Today's fourth part of the upload. My husband and I recently watched The Wolf of Snow Hollow, and I was gushing to my in-laws about how fun this movie was. While on the topic of werewolves, I shared this story this past weekend with them, and it creeped them out. Years ago, I was working at a veterinary clinic. I was kennel staff. We provided bo dog boarding, and I frequently worked weekends tending to the dogs, making sure they were walk, fed, cleaned up after. It was a pretty fun job. One weekend, we had two big huskies staying with us in retrospect. One of them was particularly tall and fluffy, so it might have been a Malamute or a Mutt or whatever. Regardless, they were great dogs. They didn't poop or pee in their kennel. They played outside great and were super friendly with me. In a word, well behaved. So Monday rolled around and their owners were there to pick them up. For safety, when it came to big dogs, we were only to bring up one dog at a time from the kennels to the front lobby. I followed that protocol, grabbed the smaller one first before I pr proceed. I have to explain the kennel setup so this next part makes sense. Where we kept the larger dogs was against the far wall of the kennel room. There were large indoor runs of about 15 feet by 15 feet with both huskies staying together in one such run over the weekend. The walls were made of stainless steel, easy for disinfecting and about 15 feet high. The wall of the kennel was a special kind of reinforced glass so you could see the entirety of that kennel from the outside. Also of interest, we only had one other guy staffed at the vet clinic and he was 5'10". So I brought out the first dog and there was lots of happy yelping and husky talk. Those of you who own huskies know what I mean when the dog was reunited with his family. I brought out the second dog and he or she was very reserved, tail wagging and just generally happy. The owners didn't say a lot to me other than thanks and have a good day. And they didn't stay long once they got their dogs back. We generally have the owners pay first before we bring the dogs up from the kennels because it makes it easier for the owners not to have to juggle their wallets and an excited dog. Task done. I went back to the kennels to clean up and get it ready for the next round of dogs to come in. I grabbed the spray bottle of disinfectant and get ready to clean the walls. And that's when I saw it. High up above me, about 14 feet up on the back wall, was a human handprint. And it wasn't standard size either. It was huge. Looking at it, I was thoroughly creeped out and got the handprint wiped off the stainless steel quickly using a multi-step stool on 5.5. I told my co-workers and vet tech about it, and they were creeped out as well and told me not to bring it up again. I was the only one working the kennels that morning. Between bringing up the last dog and returning to the kennels, there was not enough time for our only male staff member to run in, jump up, and leave a single hair handprint. I asked him later if he had been in the kennels at all, and he said no. Apparently around that time he was doing intake in a vet room. And like I said, the handprint was too big to belong to any normal-sized human. And that's how I inadvertently took care of a well-behaved shapeshifter slash dogman slash werewolf for a weekend. Today's fifth part of the upload is a interesting conversation on a forum that I found. Strange creatures seen on 119 Bell County. Person named Hawk. This morning at 10 a.m. I was going up 119 a little outside of Callaway, was heading toward Harlan. When I looked to my right in the field on the road where some cows were grazing, I saw something that I can't explain. It was running across the field extremely fast. It was gray in color and was running on two legs like a man, but low to the ground. And it had a head like a man and a large body and moved very fast. I got a good look at it. I'm 49 years old and I've never seen anything like it. Has anyone else seen this thing or anything else strange like it? 
I'm really interested in finding out what the heck this was. Another person, Glenn Walker. I must have been right behind you because I saw it too. Don't know what the heck it was, but it was downright strange. I wish I had my rifle with me at the time. I could have been rich. Hawk. It was the strangest thing I've ever seen, that's for sure. What do you think it was? Hawk, after a poster, was making fun of him. Look, this is not a joke. It's truly something strange. I know it sounds crazy, but it really happened. And I would like to know what it was truly. I know if my car tore up 119 at night, I will not get out and walk for help after seeing what I saw in the crossing that field in daylight. It looked like some kind of monster for real. Hawk again. It was where the Christmas store used to sit on 119 outside of Calway, on the right side of the road in the field with all of the white cows are. Not for sure on what mile marker, but I can tell you if this was a, I don't think this would be considered a Bigfoot cause it was gray in color and was running close to the ground on two legs. Kind of looked like, and I know this is going to sound strange, a wolf man thing. It was very large, gray, very strange looking. Hawk again. What gets me is the cows in the field didn't even take notice to the thing. It was as if they were used to seeing it or something they just kept seeing and grazing. Isn't that kind of strange? It is to me. Like the one person said earlier here, they also seen it and I wish I had a gun with me. Also, I would have shot it and been rich right now. Poster named I Know states, The location is the old Santa's Place store. Over the recent weeks, several cows in that field either have disappeared or have been killed. Tracks have been found resembles dog prints, but they are four times larger. Best time to catch a glimpse of it is on foggy nights or early morning hours. But don't go there trying to shoot as the property owner protects his land. Makes me wonder if he's using the cattle to feed it. No, I was able to get a couple other people to confirm some cows went missing. Then Hawk. Well, then someone on here needs to call in the folks to investigate this cause. This thing is here. What gets me is I saw it in daylight, so it must not be something that comes out at night, right? But I am here to tell you, all after seeing this very scary thing, my view of the unexplained has been changed forever. Another poster, his name is It's True. Don't be so quick to make fun. I live in this area and my kids have seen it, or them as far back as 20 years ago. And so did their friends. It's not a joke. I, for one, would love for someone to come and check it out. Don't the Bigfoot hunters live in Mar Middlesboro now? Maybe we could run an ad in the paper for them to contact someone in the area, but not everyone's seen it. I, for one, would talk to them. I think they had an article in the paper months ago. Please, if they read this, run it again, and someone will get in touch with them. There's always has to be some fun marker on here. I hope you people see this. Maybe it'll shut you up. When a child runs in the house pale as a ghost, almost crying, telling you what they saw, what would you do? Like me, keep quiet for 20-some years because people like you, and they still talk about it today. Then Hawk, well, let me tell you something. It is one of the scariest things you'll ever see, and that's for sure. Thing about it, I used to laugh and make fun too. I didn't believe in all that stuff, but now I know there is such things, and it's changed my way of thinking. I want to learn more about this stuff and what it is. Another poster named Bee Hunter. I've got a friend that saw it, and he said it looked like a hairy man that walked upright and was about 5'5". Five five. It scared him. He also said it walked upright and was 5'5". Five five. 
Next person to post, Jay Hatfield. I've seen it also with my own two eyes, and I know what I saw. I don't need to convince anyone. Go out there sometime along the river on 119 below Old Mary Lee's store in early morning, and you'll see it. Another poster named Not Playing. I'm not crazy nor playing. About six years ago, I seen the same thing. Me and my girl was in her car at the vet park in Harlan Road. Looking out back, even opened my door to get out. My girl said, shut the door, get in here. We're leaving. She about wrecked that car trying to get out of there. And it did look like a human man run fast. When got out of the car, it ran low to the ground like a wolf. I'm telling you, in front of God's eyes, it's true. Then Hawk posts again. Look, I know it's not a bear. I saw I don't think it was the so-called Bigfoot. I just tell y'all. I don't know what it was. It was big, gray, running on two feet, not four. It was scary. So there it is. Take it for what it's worth. No drugs involved. Saw it in daylight in the middle of the morning. So yes, I think there should be people to investigate because there is really something there. Another poster, Mystery. I know that a lot of you think this is a joke, but let me assure you, it is for real. It has been seen in this area for years. Most people just don't say anything because of people like the ones making jokes. And let me say, I am not saying it's a Bigfoot or whatever it is. Just something that will make you a believer if you, don't, if you do ever see it. Kids, teenagers, and adults have seen this mystery creature. This creature or creatures has been around our home in the mountains on and off for about 20 years or longer. Same area Hawk is talking about. Kids seen it a while on their four-wheeler. It chased after them. Then a few years later seen it again, then by a small child last summer. Then just a few weeks ago, out of the blue, two of us saw something. We were setting up cameras as well. Over the years, we tried to make ourselves believe we were not seeing and hearing these things or say maybe it was a bear or something always happens when you're not thinking about it then another poster long time it has been around here longer than 20 years back in 74 i had just graduated high school and four of us were heading home on 119 at calway around one in the morning and this thing we thought it was a large wolf at the time came across the field and across the highway right in front of us we never said anything about it because you always have these nitwits that don't take it seriously. Then another poster called Dude. I've seen that thing twice. Not quite the same place, but that it was it. Except it was dark gray and it was chasing something. It's been in a field both times. I'm actually kind of scared to go in the woods because of it. Because I saw it catch whatever it was chasing and it ripped it apart brutally. It looked about my height, wasn't too large, but was faster than hell and kind of crouched down. Another poster, unknown. I've seen the large gray creature on 119 also, just before 8 in the morning, around Christmas store fields as well. Then Hawk. It's a monster, yes, a monster, and I saw it, so don't get out of your car at night if it stalls out there. Cause, like I said, it's big gray monster. And it's up there for sure, and that's no lie. Hard to believe, but it's the truth. Make fun of all you want, but you'll never see because there will be more than me to see it. Or they have and won't admit to it because they're afraid of being made fun of. But I saw it in broad daylight. Now, for those of you who are not really familiar with that area, they're talking about Bell County, Virginia. And I've had three people come on the show from Tazewell County, uh, DJ and two other people. And the one guy came on, talked about his granddad seeing a creature in the field going into a cave with like a fox head. DJ seen the dog man uh, once, two, three three times, uh, one pretty close to the inner innards of Tazewell. Um, and it was just, I mean, so there's 
definitely something in Tazewell County, guys. And there's about six to seven people right there, all verifying it. Wow, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's upload as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. Uh, interesting little fact, Bell County, Virginia is very close to Tazewell County. I've had two people come on from Tazewell County and share their encounters. DJ being one, and the gentleman, I forgot his name, being the second. His grandfather, off 119, saw a dogman uh, going into a cave or heading toward the cave. Um, what they described was dogman like being with a fox head. Um, very terrifying. So, I don't know. But with that, guys, I want to bid you farewell. Thank you for always tuning in. And see ya!